Good evening, prayer warriors. This is Brother Felix. And tonight we're reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 through 33. In the name of God, the Father, Jesus Christ, Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I thank you for today. I thank you for my life. I thank you for my wife, Teresa, my beautiful children, Emmanuel, Ariana, Carlos Felix, Luis Enrique. I thank you for all the prayer warriors, all my brothers and sisters, my family, my friends, everyone watching this video. Lord, I ask in Jesus' name that you fill my cousin's daughter, Sophia Borge, with your Holy Spirit, and that the Holy Spirit heals her of what she's going through right now. I ask that the Holy Spirit fills the doctors, the nurses, the entire hospital staff, and that the Holy Spirit guides the treatment and procedures that they do to Sophia. I ask for a quick recovery for her and a renewing of her, her body, of her mind, of her soul, and for you to give her strength, Lord. I also ask in this reading tonight that there's at least one verse for each one of our ears. So that's two verse minimum for each head that's listening to your word being spoken tonight. I love you, God. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Holy Spirit. This study is your study. In your name we pray, amen. All right, my brothers and sisters, Matthew 14, verse 13. Jesus feeds 5,000. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew the boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from their towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking five loaves and two fish, and looking up to the heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men, besides women and children. Jesus walks on water. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land. Buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. 
Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. Crying out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when he climbed onto the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Jesus heals all who touch him. When they had crossed over, they landed on Genesaret. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak. And all who touched him were healed. This is the word of the Lord our God. Amen, my brothers and sisters. Let's go back to verses 13 and 14. 13 and 14 reads, When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Jesus sought solitude after the news of John's death. Sometimes we may need to deal with our grief alone. Jesus did not dwell on his grief, but returned to the ministry he came to do. Jesus performed some miracles as signs of his identity. He used other miracles to teach important truths. But here we read that he healed people because he had compassion on them. Jesus was and is a loving, caring, and feeling person. When you are suffering, remember that Jesus hurts with you. He has compassion on you. Glory be to God. Now let's go to verses 19 through 21. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. So Jesus multiplied five loaves and two fish to feed over 5,000 people. What he was originally given seemed insufficient, but in his hands it became more than enough. We often feel that our contribution to Jesus is meager, but he can use and multiply whatever we give him, whether it is talent, time, or treasure. It is when we give them to Jesus that our resources are multiplied. The text states that there were 5,000 men present besides women and children. Therefore, the total number of people Jesus fed could have been ten to 15,000. The number of men is listed separately because in the Jewish culture of the day, men and women usually ate separately when in public. The children ate with the women. Now verse 23 reads, 
After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. Seeking solitude was an important priority for Jesus. He made room in his busy schedule to be alone with the Father. Spending time with God in prayer nurtures a vital relationship and equips us to meet life's challenges and struggles. Develop the discipline of spending time alone with God. It will help you grow spiritually and become more and more like Christ. Jesus walks on the sea. The miraculous feeding of the 5,000 occurred on the shores of of the Sea of Galilee near Bethsaida. Jesus then sent his disciples across the lake. Several hours later they encountered a storm and Jesus came to them walking on the water. The boat then landed on Genesaret. Verse 28 reads, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, Tell me to come to you on the water. Peter was not putting Jesus to the test, something we are told not to do in chapter 4, verse 7. Instead, he was the only one in the boat to react in faith. His impulsive requests led him to experience a rather unusual demonstration of God's power. Peter started to sink because he took his eyes off Jesus and focused on the high waves around him. His faith wavered, then he realized that he was then he realized what he was doing. We may not walk on water, but we do walk through tough situations. If we focus on the waves of difficult circumstances, around us without looking to Jesus for help, we too may despair and sink. To maintain your faith when situations are difficult, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus' power rather than on your inadequacies. Verses 30 and 31 read, But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Although we start out with good intentions, sometimes our faith falters. This doesn't necessarily mean we have failed. When Peter's faith faltered, he reached out to Christ. The only one who could help. He was afraid, but he still looked to Christ. When you are apprehensive about the troubles around you and doubt Christ's presence or ability to help, you must remember that he is the only one who can really help. You know, no matter what we're going through, no matter what the doctor's reports say, no matter what the judge is saying, no matter what people in our family is saying, what people we have a relationship is saying, Jesus can help us out of every and any situation. We just have to ask him. And we have to have faith. I can't begin to tell you out of how many situations... He saved me out of. I've been saved from horrific car accidents to near death experiences. I've been saved uh, so many times in the eyes of justice. There's been so many ways that I've been saved. There's even been times when I've done things wrong, where it was my fault, or where I made a mistake. And I was still covered by the blood of Jesus. That is how awesome 
of a God we serve. So no matter what you're going through right now, no matter what you're feeling right now, I challenge you to put your trust in Jesus. Put your trust in God. Put your trust in the Holy Spirit. Because they are the only ones that can help us through any and everything. I've experienced it in my own life. I've seen it. And I'm testifying to you right now. There's somebody watching this right now that, that needs to hear this. No matter what you're going through, my brother and my sister, put your trust in Jesus. And he will get you through. Verse 34 says, When they had crossed over, they landed at Genesaret. Genesaret was located on the west side of the Sea of Galilee in a fertile, well-watered area. Verses 35 and 36 read, And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak. And all who touched him were healed. The people recognized Jesus as a great healer, but how many understood who he truly was? How many of us understand who God truly is? He is our everything. He is our only thing. I understand that now. They came to Jesus for physical healing, but did not come for spiritual healing. How many times we ask God for something to help us through a situation, but we don't ask him to renew our, our mind, body, soul, heart, and spirit. Let's not only ask God for, for physical healing, but let's ask God for spiritual healing as well, my brothers and sisters. They came to prolong their lives on earth, but did they come to secure their eternal lives? People may seek Jesus to learn valuable lessons from his life or in hopes of finding relief from pain. But we miss Jesus' whole message. If we seek him only to heal our bodies, but not our souls, if we look to him for help only in this life, rather than for his eternal plan for us, only when we understand the real Jesus Christ can we appreciate how he can truly change our lives. You know, we all should be working towards the same goal which is to be getting right with God, to serve God however we can in his kingdom so that one day when he calls us home, we can be in the presence of, of Abba, our almighty father, Jesus Christ, the son that sits at his right hand and the Holy Spirit and all his angels bowing down, worshiping our Lord, singing songs of praise, just being in his presence. That should be our ultimate goal. We should be working every day to achieve that goal. And the only way we're going to achieve that is by not knowing Scripture, not knowing of God, not knowing of Jesus, not knowing of the Holy Spirit, is by having a, a, a relationship with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. When you speak, when you do something, do people see the Jesus in you? Do people see the love of Christ coming out of your body? Do they hear you speak the love of Christ coming out of your mouth? Do they see the love of Christ, the love of forgiveness of Jesus through your actions? If you answered no to any of those questions, then that's what we need to change. 
People need to be able to feel Jesus' love, hear Jesus' love, see Jesus' love coming from, from us. If they don't feel it from us, who, who else are they going to feel it from? Us as believers have a responsibility to, to live like Christ, love and forgive as he did. We should serve like him. You know, at the, at the Last Supper, he washed the disciples' feet. That was usually what a servant would have done in those days. That was our God, our creator, washing the disciples' feet. He was serving them. Now, if our God served the disciples, what should we be doing to our neighbor, to our brothers and sisters? We should be serving them like Jesus did. Verse 36, and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak, and all who touched him were healed. Jewish men wore tassels on the lower edges of their robes, according to God's command. You can read on that in Deuteronomy chapter 22, 12. I've, I've read that before. It's there. Old Testament. By Jesus' day, these tassels were seen as a signs of holiness. It also refers back to that in chapter 23, verse 5. It was natural that people seeking healing should reach out and touch these. But as one sick woman learned, healing came from faith and not from Jesus' cloak. You can read more about that in chapter 9. Verses 19 through 22. You know, uh, that touches on faith. So, you know, sometimes you can pray for somebody, for healing for somebody. And sometimes your faith alone can make the, the healing happen. Sometimes you can be praying to heal somebody but the person you're praying for doesn't have faith and the healing doesn't happen. I've seen it before, almost done instantly. As the person who's praying has faith and the person being prayed for has faith, I've seen the healing happen instantly. And when it happens... Usually the person that is healed has such a big and beautiful smile. I've seen people react in different ways. Uh, I've seen people just start uh, laughing uncontrollably. Uh, I've seen uh, other people start jumping up and down. You know, and, I, and I've seen some people uh, tear up. You know, um, faith is, is very, very important. You know, uh, which disciple was it? Doubtful Thomas. He said he wouldn't believe that Jesus came back from the dead till he put his fingers in his hands where, where, where the nails were. You know, so, so Jesus came and, you know, let him put his fingers in Jesus' hands where, where, where the nails were and, and in his side. You know, and, and Jesus tells him, you know, you believe because you see, but blessed are those who believe and have not seen. You know, when we have faith, we are blessed. We are the ones that he was referring to when he says, blessed are those. You know, that's why he says, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, which is one of the world's most smallest seeds, you can tell a mountain to move and that mountain's going to move. You know, it's not because of something that you're doing or some magical word that you're saying. It's the faith that we have in God, our creator, and the Holy Spirit that's inside of us, in Jesus. 
It's heaven on earth. It's the Lord coming out of us. You know, faith is so important. And any of you guys who, 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 who have a lack of faith, you know, reach out to, to a pastor. Reach out, um, get yourself a spiritual father, spiritual mother, or a spiritual brother or sister that, that can help you, that can help you with it. Don't be a, a doubting Thomas. You know, ha, ha, have faith. Be bold. Like Peter. What was it uh, Peter said? Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. And God says, come. You know, uh, man, how awesome that would be. To be on some in the middle of some crazy storm and to see Jesus in front and Jesus call us by by our name and tell us to come. Man, I tell you what, if I'm ever on that boat, I'm gonna jump right off the side of the boat and start running to him. And I'm not gonna take my eyes off of him. I'm just going to keep my eyes on Jesus until I make it into his precious arms and let him hold me up. Man, God, you are awesome. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving each and every person watching this video. Oh, I have such a peace inside. I feel so happy. I hope that you guys watching this also can share the same peace that I feel. Also invite the Holy Spirit into your body. Let him come and bring all the troubles of the storm that you're going through. Let him give you peace. Peace be with you, my brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, there's there's nothing like the peace of, of God. There's There's no... No person that can make you feel happy, no no drink, no drug, no high, no no nothing that feels better than, than the peace of the Holy Spirit. I've never been so happy in my life as I am now. Now that I have a relationship with God. I just want to thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And we're going to close out in prayer, my brothers and sisters. In the name of God, the Father, Jesus Christ, Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I just thank you for, for the study for tonight. I thank you for my brothers and sisters watching this. And I just, you know, ask that, that you continue to, to bless, heal, and protect us. My wife and my children, my family and the prayer warriors and my friends and my brothers and my sisters. I ask for, for, for special healing and protection for Sophia Borge. I just ask for you to strengthen her, Lord. For you to fill her with the Holy Spirit and let that Holy Spirit be the doctor and, and just... Fix up whatever is, is, is not working correctly in her body. Heal whatever needs to be healed in her body. I ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus who was born of a Virgin Mary. Jesus who's the only Son of God our Father. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus, I ask for healing for you, Sophia. Right now, immediately in the name of Jesus, I ask for healing for you. You know, and I ask that, that you continue to, to protect all of us. That you heal us all of any addictions that we may have. Of any sins that we're stuck in. Break those chains, Jesus. If, if, if we're being plagued by the devil or his demon, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you, Satan, and your demons to flee out of all of our lives. Immediately, in the name of Jesus, you must flee. 
I ask that you just continue to protect Brother Brian. And that you continue to use him. Continue continue finding the, the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost sons and daughters. That he continues to, to, to bring them back to you, Lord. And I ask if it is your will that, that he gets out and on his first court date coming up here in August. That the judge just, just lets him free. God, you can change the heart of, of kings. You can definitely change the heart of men, of judges, of, of, of whoever. You're an awesome God. And I ask you just to protect uh, his wife Monica and their children. That you provide them with everything that they need. And that you give them peace and safety and security while Brother Brian is, is separated from him right now. And I ask that you just continue to protect my family, my wife and my children. That you just give us healing. You continue to, to renew our minds, our bodies, our hearts and our souls. I gladly put my life in your hand, Lord. I love you. And I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I love you, my brothers and sisters. I hope you guys are having a good night. I'll see you guys later. Bye.